So some of you guys might remember a project I started working on on this channel called codepost.dev. Now in this application, this website, I developed a very quick view count where a user can view a post on the site. Uh, and one of the problems was you could literally increment the view count on every request, right? So, which is obviously a big problem. You don't want someone to be able to spam up their post and get like, I don't know, a thousand views right from refreshing. So uh, one thing I just done very quickly in Go was a quick IP cache so that I cache someone's IP for five minutes and then only one view count will count every five minutes if they refresh the page, right? So I want to go over that in this video. So I've been kind of redoing code posts locally to make it a bit better with logins and, and stuff. And this is just one of many features that I that will be coming to the application. So as you can see, this post has 47 views. If I refresh it, that view will count. And if I keep refreshing it, it obviously isn't counting, right? So that's basically what I've implemented. So let's go over how I built that. Here we have a very quick package called the IP cache package, right? So it's just a simple package in Go. I've got um, item life minutes so obviously in production this would be five for testing locally it's one which just makes life a lot easier obviously uh, this is the item i store in the cache so it's the it's basically the last like the initial time they requested when it was last seen etc and obviously this could be extended for other use cases as well so this is all just an in-memory cache it doesn't go off to anywhere it doesn't go to a database or anything it's just in memory because the data is only going to be persisted in memory for five minutes maximum anyway so what I've got here is a cache. So I've got a cache, which is just a map. The string is the IP address of the user and the item, uh, IP cache item is obviously the uh, type up here. So we have a simple new cache method or constructor function, which um, obviously just makes, initializes the map and it also initializes a read write mutex. Um, and then also I use the background go function that I covered in this channel, which basically allows you to spin up a background go routine right in, in go obviously. Um, and that's this function here. So what this function does is every 30 seconds on this timer, it goes and checks the IP cache or IP addresses that have been in there for longer than five minutes. So that's what this does here. And then it simply just goes and deletes that IP address from that cache. If said IP address has been in there for longer than five minutes. Uh, we then have a simple set method and a has method just so I can check if an IP address is in the cache and if we have got it in the cache we can then set the last scene time again and then obviously we want to be able to set an item in the cache with its initial request time or when it's come in. So how do I use this package in our endpoints? So I have a simple endpoint here called get code snippet or get snippet which simply tries to go and get a slug uh, get a post via its slug from the database, right? So I'm using Fiber in this project. Most of my projects now, I think going forward, I will just be using HTTP standard library just because Mux is having improvements coming in soon. But um, anyway, um, yeah, so here I have, I'm getting the remote address from the context in Fiber. Uh, and I quite simply just pass that into this go routine here, which goes and increments the view count. So the reason why, obviously, I passed it into the go routine is because if this context is finished, there might be issues with trying to access the remote address of the previous context. So what I've done is I've taken a copy in into this go routine by passing it in as the first argument here. And then quite simply, uh, obviously, I check the cache. If the user is in the cache, then we don't need to go and increment the view count. And then likewise, if they're not in the cache, I will just go and increment the recount and then set their IP address in the cache. So that means again, after five minutes, they won't be in the cache, so they'll get another view on the post, right? So I'll quickly go over the cache logs here. So you can see every 30 seconds, uh, there's a log which is checking the cache for stale IP addresses. And then when it found, finds one, it will just go and log it out um, and say, you know, the IP address needs to be deleted and then it logs out the IP address and it deletes it from the cache, right? Uh, yeah, it was, it was a very quick like problem to solve, but I wanted to share it just to, I don't know, keep you guys posted on the project and some little things that I've been working on. Um, you're probably going to get, you know, there's probably some issues with this, but it's just a quick solution on a project that I'm trying to build quick and hacky. Um, so, I mean, yeah, hopefully if someone's having a similar problem or you're building a simple app, this will help you a little bit. Um, I also wrote some simple unit tests, obviously, for this cache, just to check that you can concurrently add IP addresses to the cache. So I just spin up a routine and um, go and add in their 10 IP addresses at the same time, and then obviously try and check the cache has had them, just as a very simple test here. Um, but yeah, it solves the problem, 
and um, it's all concurrent safe. So, you know, we can't, like, four, four people can't write to the cache at the same time, and there won't be any kind of um, race conditions or anything. It's all concurrent safe, all down to our read write mutex um, because we're locking and unlocking, obviously, on each function and in the job here as well. Um, but yeah, hopefully in some way you've got something from this video. Maybe you've got an application you want to build a quick IP cache on. Um, and that is kind of what I've got and how it's working, right? But yeah, um, I'm going to leave the video here. Hopefully, again, you've learned something. Leave a like on the video if you have learned something. And I'll see you all later on.